Hi. We're in the last chapter of Sidelights on Christian Doctrine by James Orr. Chapter 10, Eternity and Its Issues, Advent and Judgment. Orr says, reverting to our principles of prophetic interpretation, let us look at their bearing on this problem of the time of the Lord's coming. It has been observed in regard to Old Testament prophecy how neglectful it is of the element of time and how regularly the consummation on which the prophet's eye is fixed is regarded as rising immediately behind the series of events which fill the foreground of his vision. Times and seasons were not known to him, and it was left to providence to unfold the steps leading up to the final day of the Lord. But what the prophet did know was that the coming of this day was certain and was the event to which all other events were hastening on. To the prophet's faith and expectancy, therefore, this event seemed always near, as a high mountain on the verge of the horizon always seemed at hand. So this event loomed up behind whatever phase of providence was immediately in view. Is it, or could it have been otherwise, in the New Testament? The Lord's coming was, beyond doubt, the great fact on which the hope of the church was set. It was the great event ever to be watched and waited for, according to Mark. 1335, to which every eye and prayer ought always to be directed. Its time, beyond general indications, was unknown. It stood out, therefore, at every point behind the immediate conflict with the powers of the world, behind gospel preaching, behind persecution, behind heresies, behind fall of Jerusalem, behind collapse of Gentile empires. The one thing to be looked for, watched for, worked for, prayed for, and as far as human effort could aid it, hastened. This last remark leads to the mention of another principle in connection with prophecy apt to be overlooked. I mean its, I mean its conditionality. This is a principle to which often justice is not done in asking the question, why has the Lord's coming been so long delayed? Have we ourselves, as the Church of Christ, no responsibility for that delay? We are apt to think of the Lord's coming as something which has its fixed date, to which our own faithfulness or unfaithfulness has no relation. This is a mistake. From the point of view of God's absolute knowledge, no doubt, the day and hour of the Advent, like that of every event in time, is immovably fixed. God knows all the circumstances that condition that event and the very moment when it will take place. In that sense, the Father, and He alone, knows the day and hour. But from the human point of view, it is not given us to know this, for the very reason that the nearness or farness of the coming depends on many things with which we have ourselves to do. Take our human life. It is quite certain that God knows the precise moment when every one of us will die. Our times are in His hand. The hour of our death is known to Him. Yet, from our human point of view, we know that the time of our death depends, in part at least, upon ourselves, that by proper care we may, in all prob probability, prolong our life, as on the other hand, by carelessness, profligacy, or exposure to unhealthy conditions, we can certainly shorten it. We may fire a pistol or take poison and end our lives on the spot. Do these things conflict? They do not conflict at all. So with reference to the Lord's coming in the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the second petition in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, is thus explained, quote, that the kingdom of grace may be advanced and the kingdom of glory may be hastened. But why hastened if we have nothing to do with it? No responsibility for its retarding or advancement. Does anyone believe that if the church had been watchful and diligent and faithful as it ought to have been, abounding in faith and love from the beginning, things would have been as far back as they are today, that the end would not have been nearer or perhaps reached long ago. That's a great thought. And we know how relevant that is, i.e. The, the reason the Lord tarries is because it's not time yet, and part of that is our human responsibility. So, I can't help but think of J.C. Ryle, who was a contemporary of war, an older contemporary, who had been, during the period from 1880 to 1900, the first bishop of Liverpool. And I did a video on him not that long ago. If only C.T. Russell and the other so-called prophecy teachers of the day 
had listened to J.C. Ryle, so we'll put that video up. And then another one on the only time we need to know. So as, although Orr is very right about what generally the prophet, pr prophets uh, did not know in the Old Testament, in, in the case of Daniel, there is a very precise time prophecy which shows that in, uh, there are some things about God, about which God wants us to be very aware. And one of them was the time of the coming of Christ in the flesh. So Daniel chapter 9 is apart from other prophetic pictures of Messiah in the Old Testament, that it is very pre precise chronologically. So a link to that one. The only time we need to know, Daniel chapter 9, the 70 weeks. Next time, more about Christ's coming as a process.